M1 Pro, MacBook Pro, 14 inch, time to talk about it. What's up guys, welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. And here we are with my review of the M1 Pro, 14 inch MacBook Pro. So yeah, let's, let's get into it because I've got a lot to cover. So first impressions, personally I love this size of laptop. I personally think that a 14 inch laptop is the perfect size of laptop and when I compare the 13 inch MacBooks and the 15 inch MacBooks and this is right smack in the middle. This kind of has more of the body size of a 13 inch but with these smaller bezels on the display you're getting much more screen real estate so you're still getting a smaller form factor but a really really good display. It's noticeably thicker than previous MacBook Pros for obvious reasons. And this is the new, but not so new, it's sort of a squared off rectangular design. So they've sort of brought back this design, came on a lot of the uh, older sort of style MacBook Pros, which I, I, I do like it to be fair. And it sort of toes the line with the rest of the products range, the likes of the iPhone and the iPad, they have that sort of squared off rectangular design. So yeah, it fits in quite well. Ports are back, woo! MacBook Pro has brought back the ports. So we have the all the good things. SD reader, HDMI port, three USB-Cs, of course, MagSafe charging, which is something I've always liked on previous MacBooks, so I'm glad to see it back. On the whole, it's good to see some proper physical ports back on the MacBook Pro. Kudos to Apple, because Apple have took that step backwards and brought back these really good ports, so nice one. So let's get into a spec overview of this laptop. This is the base model. 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Apple really need to get better with these names, they really do. <laughs> this is the base model M1 Pro. This has the eight core CPU with six performance cores, two efficiency cores. So this also has the 14 core GPU and the 16 core neural engine as well. So we also have the 14.2 inch Liquid Retina XDR display and that comes in at a 3024 by 1964 resolution with 254 pixels per inch. So yeah, screen's pretty sharp and pretty snazzy, I will say. And of course, this display comes with ProMotion. So we've got that adaptive uh, refresh rate of up to 120 Hertz, which is pretty awesome. 16 gig of RAM as standard and 512 gig SSD as standard as well. And let's get into the ports. So as I said previously, we have our ports here. So we do have our SD card reader. We have our HDMI as well as a USB-C on that side. We do have another two USB-C ports. We have the headphone jack, and of course we have the MagSafe charging port as well. All of the USB-C support USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, which is pretty awesome. So we'll get transfer speeds on USB-C devices and Thunderbolt devices of up to 40 gigabits per second. Not too shabby. Let's get into some notable features. Apple have the scissor switch style keyboard, which uh, again was on the previous MacBooks. It comes on the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro as well. It's the best type of keyboard and it is phenomenal on this laptop as, as to be expected. Touch ID built into the power button as well, which is good for that, uh, for that secure authentication. The touch bar is gone. Now, personally, that doesn't really affect me. I wasn't really a fan of the touch bar, but for those touch bar fans, Unlucky, it's not here anymore. MagSafe charging, so MagSafe charging is back and personally, I'm happy to see it back. I'm happy to have that charging port dedicated just to only charging the laptop and not having to use up a USB-C port, which uh, is pretty valuable, I sort of find, and it's the one thing that kind of annoys me about my MacBook Air is I've only got two of those ports and one of them's a charging port, so it's good to see it and I'm, I'm glad it's back. So this also comes with a 67 watt charging brick, which is larger than the 30 watt charging brick that comes with the MacBook Air. So there's a little comparison for you as well. The SD reader. This is something I massively miss having being a MacBook Air user. I really do miss have, being able to just put the card directly into the laptop. It's great to see it back here. But unfortunately, we live in a dongle society. So it is what it is. So the SD reader is XDXC and it supports UHS 2 speeds for memory cards. So if you have any of those UHS 3 high speed cards, they're not going to work on this, so bear that in mind. HDMI on board on this, it is HDMI 2.0. It'll support 4K up to 60 frames per second, which is pretty decent. 
so, but uh, it does not support HDMI 2.1, so also bear that in mind. The display. So the MacBook Pro now comes with the Liquid Retina XDR display, which uh, as you can see is lovely, nice and bright and colourful. This is the 10-bit mini LED HDR 16x10 display. Almost has a 4K resolution and also comes with ProMotion, so you've got that adaptive refresh rate up to 120 hertz. And there's a notch, but we'll get into that a bit later. Battery life, as expected on the MacBook Pro, depending on your use case, you can get up to 17 hours of battery use on the MacBook Pro, which again just cements the battery life on these MacBooks as best in class. Okay, let's talk about the notch. The notch is one of the new noticeable details on the MacBook Pro this year, and it has divided opinion. The notch is housing the new 1080p webcam and microphone array, which is a massive upgrade from the 720p iPotato camera of the previous MacBooks. So this is a test of the new webcam on the MacBook Pro 14 inch and this is a mic test as well so let me know in the comments down below what's the video quality like uh, is it a big improvement over the previous macbook pros what's the sound like as well let me know cheers which was way overdue there is also a couple of sensors in here and i'll be truthfully honest i don't particularly know what they do all i know is in my honest opinion this notch is far too big on this display personally for me I don't mind if a feature is maybe not the most pleasing to the eye as long as it's performing a function. For example, on the iPhone, there is the notch that houses Face ID. Now, yes, while it is obtrusive and while you don't get that complete full screen experience, I do understand that it is housing Face ID and Face ID is performing a function. And I'm okay with that because Face ID, when it comes to facial recognition on smartphones, is best in class. So, to be truthfully honest, I think it would have softened the blow for me if the MacBook Pro had a came with Face ID this year. But the fact that it hasn't done, I just don't see any point in the notch being here. Now, when I have the MacBook in full screen mode and quite a few apps, because I use dark mode quite a bit, a lot of the bars at the top are blacked out anyway so in essence i can't really see it but when i'm on a, on a bright window or if i'm looking at my desktop like like it is now it's very noticeable and it's a bit irritating if i'm being honest personally i just don't see why they couldn't put a hole punch in there like they did with the imac <laughs> right now that i've had a rant let's talk about performance so as you may know i do run my channel mostly from a m1 macbook air when i'm not switching between my ipad pro as you may know m1 is no slouch by any means their architecture has been <sighs> talked about for the past year as to how good and how well it performs for example i have a work laptop that is a dell xps 15 it is the i7 model with a 16 gig of ram and a geforce gpu uh, 1650 Ti GPU which is no slouch and when I'm rendering 4k video on my MacBook Air if I put the same content onto the XPS the MacBook will smoke it you know so so the M1 MacBook Air is not slouch by any means which is pretty impressive for an ultra thin laptop without a cooling fan so I did a comparison between the my MacBook Air and this MacBook Pro my MacBook Air is the 8 core CPU M1 with the 8 core GPU. Uh, I have 8 gig of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. So it's decent. I didn't. I opted for the extra SSD over the 16 gig of RAM because I didn't really feel that like I needed the extra RAM. So I thought, why not? Let's put it up against this. I shoot in 4K uh, x264. So I got that footage. I rendered it into HEVC x265. Exported it using LumaFusion on the MacBook Air. The simple reason I use LumaFusion on my MacBook Air because I also use it on my iPad Pro. So I like to sort of flick between the two. So I rendered that project in five minutes and 12 seconds which isn't bad it's sharp and quick and it does what it needs to do so excited i got i put luma fusion onto this macbook and i put the same project onto the macbook and rendered it using the same thing hevc 265 and it rendered and exported in five minutes and 10 seconds so literally between the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, there was two seconds of a difference. What? I honestly expected this to blow my MacBook Air out of the water. And when it didn't, I was like, what the heck? So I sat racking my brains, trying to comprehend what made these results. 
Was there something wrong with the MacBook? Was there something wrong with LumaFusion? Have I done something wrong? Have I had settings not correct? I couldn't figure it out. So I racked my brains and went back to the drawing board. So I decided to up the ante and I went and shot my first ProRes video on my 13 Pro Max. So I shot about 13 minutes worth of footage which was uh, about 65 gig for the file itself. By the way, it took me ages to transfer off via lightning. <sighs> someday, someday we'll get USB-C. No, we won't. I have then put Final Cut Pro onto the MacBook Air and onto the MacBook Pro as well, just to see if I could get a different set of results. You know, so I wasn't using the same applications and stuff like that there. I thought, right, let's really put this thing to the test. So I set up the same project, exactly the same on the MacBook Air and on the MacBook Pro. The results for it were pretty surprising. When all was said and done, I exported the project in Final Cut Pro on the MacBook Air and I exported it in about 9 minutes 24 seconds. Which, again, for it being ProRes and being a MacBook Air, I thought, that's pretty, that's pretty quick, you know, considering I was working with files, maybe 4 or 5 gig, and now I'm working with a file of like 65 gig, it's like, wow, that's pretty quick. So, that was okay, got Final Cut Pro set up on the MacBook Pro, same thing, same project, same layer, same everything, everything exactly the same, and rendered it out as ProRes as well on Final Cut Pro and it rendered in 1 minute and 30 seconds. 1 minute and 30 seconds. 90 seconds. Damn! Let that sink in. 1 minute 30 seconds. 90 seconds to render 65 gigs worth of ProRes footage. Hot damn! Hot damn! This thing is crazy. And the funny thing about it is, when I was exporting that project, I didn't even hear the fans turn on on this thing. I know it's a cliche, but this thing is next level. And I mean next level. While there is things I would change about the MacBook Pro, such as Ethernet on the power brick, for this being a Pro device, the lack of Ethernet, I think is a big miss, to be honest. And if they could put the Ethernet into the power brick of the iMac, why not do it with the MacBook Pro? It makes perfect sense. You'll still get those gigabit speeds through the power brick if you need it. I think they dropped the ball there with that one, if I'm being honest. And if you insist on putting this notch on the display, you need to put Face ID. You have to. Why Face ID is not coming on the on the Macs, as in the iMac and the MacBooks and the MacBook Pros, I don't get it. It's If you're going to put that notch on that screen, you should at least put the feature in in my honest opinion. While I would change those things about the MacBook Pro, these MacBooks are game changers and I mean that in every sense of the words. When it comes to performance, these things are the game changers. If you do very, very power hungry work, if you do CAD designing, if you do photo and video editing, if you do app development coding, for example, it's a no brainer. This is the right tool for you. This truly is. These are, you're talking if you think to the power that the that the Mac Pros can put out, you're talking Mac Pro power in something this compact. That's crazy. That's a no-brainer. If you're just doing the basics, if you're doing a bit of web browsing, a bit of email, a bit of Netflix, a bit of YouTube, you don't need this. Don't be buying it. Even if you're stupid with your money, don't buy this. And then one MacBook Air would do the exact same thing. That'll be wraps it up for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit that like button. It massively helps me out in the channel, guys. Really, really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, you know what you need to do. You need to hit that subscribe button. Uh, yes, you do. And if you want to see more cool videos like this one, you hit that little bell button as well. Thank you kindly. And I'm going to go because I have a lot more videos to get done. And until the next one, I'll catch you later.